It's the final honours list approved by Chief Executive Donald Jung before he leaves office at midnight tonight. And in it, he has awarded six people Hong Kong's top honour, the Grand Bohemia Medal. They include Chief Secretary Stephen Lam, who is also chairman of the Honours Committee. But because of protocol, he sat out meetings at which his own medal was discussed. Lam, who consistently ranked among the least popular of government officials in public opinion polls, was honoured for his outstanding ability and experience in public administration and for making significant contributions in helping the government steer through many challenges. Figures from the legal community make up half the Grand Bohemia list. Chief Justice Jeffrey Ma, Court of Final Appeal Judge Kamal Bukhari, and outgoing Justice Secretary Wong Yan Lung all get a medal. Wong, who has won praise for his reluctance to send contentious legal issues to Beijing for reinterpretation, was honoured for his significant contribution in upholding the rule of law and in safeguarding public interest. Completing the top honours are two men from the business sector, Wharf Chairman Peter Wu and Head of Property Giant K Wa Group, Loi Chi Wu. Receiving the city's third highest honour of a Silver Bohemia star is Home Affairs Under Secretary Florence Hui, who is expected to become the first Culture Secretary once Chief Executive-elect Leung Chen Ying's restructure plans are approved. A total of 295 people across the social spectrum were given awards for their lifelong and highly significant contribution to the well-being of Hong Kong. The government says they'll be presented with their awards later this year, possibly in October. Strong winds from last night's storm brought down trees and there was a lot of cleaning up to do today. Bo Lang reports. The clean-up operation began this morning after Tropical Storm Dok Suri passed through Hong Kong during the night and triggered the city's first number 8 typhoon warning signal. Trees were brought down by gusts of wind of nearly 100 kilometres an hour. In Repulse Bay, firefighters were called in to remove fallen trees. The storm even managed to topple these potted trees in Shen Wan last night. In Kun Tong, advertising boards dangling precariously from buildings had to be taken down. Scaffolding was also in danger of collapsing. There were no reports of any injuries. Some people went out deliberately to experience the windy and rainy weather at Jim Sha Joy Harbour, but were left disappointed by the storm. I thought the wind would be much stronger, but it's weaker than expected, said this man. Some ferry and overnight buses were suspended yesterday, but this morning most transport services had resumed. The number 8 typhoon warning signal was raised just after 11pm last night as Dok Suri passed within 70 kilometres of Hong Kong. But after about four hours, it was replaced with the number 3 signal. By 8 a.m. today, all warning signals were cancelled. The storm came and left within hours, but the observatory said expect more wet weather in the next couple of days. Bolong, ATV News. Overseas, Egypt's president-elect Mohamed Mursi has been sworn in at a ceremony in Cairo. Mursi narrowly won a runoff vote earlier this month against Ahmed Shafiq, the last prime minister of ousted leader Hosni Mubarak. He has promised to lead a modern, constitutional, national and civil country and vowed to protect the people's interests and country's sovereignty. Superstar Hollywood couple Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes are to divorce after five years of marriage. Reports say Cruise's involvement in Scientology was a contributing factor. Amory Sim reports. It's not much of a birthday present for megastar Tom Cruise, who turns 50 on Tuesday, after his wife Katie Holmes decided it was marriage impossible. The 33-year-old actress lodged papers in New York blaming irreconcilable differences. Cruise's dedication to Scientology is reported to have put a strain on the couple's relationship. The actor is rumoured to be one of the highest-ranking members of Scientology, which is widely regarded as a cult. Nonetheless, the star said he was deeply saddened by the move. Sources close to Cruz claim he was blindsided by the move and that Holmes' uncompromising bid for sole custody of their six-year-old daughter Suri shows the nastiness behind the split. At the London premiere of his new film Rock of Ages, Cruz walked the red carpet alone, claiming his wife was in China on business. The couple have not been seen together since February. 
It marks the end of a fairy tale Hollywood romance that began in April 2005. Who can forget the regular, if somewhat saccharine, public displays of affection during the early days of their courtship? A mere two months into the whirlwind romance, the Top Gun star proposed in the most romantic city in the world, Paris, at where else? The Eiffel Tower. We were at the Eiffel Tower. It's very romantic. He even called a press conference to announce the news. The odd pairing didn't quite make sense to most Hollywood fans. Despite Cruz's now infamous couch jumping on The Oprah Winfrey Show in November 2005, and Holmes's starry-eyed admission that she had a teenage crush on him and had his Top Gun poster on her bedroom wall as a kid. Still, the couple dubbed Tomcat made it to the aisle in November 2006, seven months after Holmes gave birth to their daughter Suri. Theirs was a lavish wedding fit for Hollywood royalty that took place in a 15th century Italian castle complete with a star-studded guest list and fireworks. The couple are worth around 275 million US dollars, much of that owing to Cruz's box office success. With that much money at stake, the couple have a stringent prenup that states that the Dawson's Creek actress would receive three million US dollars for each year they were married, plus their palatial home in California. If they made it to 11 years, she would receive half her husband's estate, worth about 250 million US dollars. Tomcat's split comes just 10 days after the amicable parting of Hollywood actor Johnny Depp and French singer Vanessa Paradis after 14 years together, no doubt sparking debate about the pressures faced by celebrity couples. Sports news, there's been a major upset for the world's fastest man. Usain Bolt was outrun by Johan Blake at the Jamaican 100m Olympic trials and clocked in with the world's fastest time this year. Jamaica's three fastest sprinters, Usain Bolt, Asafa Powell and Johan Blake, all looked confident ahead of the country's Olympic trials. Shit. But as the world's fastest man, Bolt fell behind and Powell was leading. That's before this happened. Blake exploded halfway through the race to clock in at 9.75 seconds. It was his personal best and the fastest time recorded in the world so far this year. Bolt reached the finishing line behind his training partner with a time of 9.86. Former world record holder Powell came in third at 9.88 seconds. Oh my God, I'm over the moon. You know, um, Usain Bolt has been motivating me and telling me I can do it, you know, and to do it tonight, it has, uh, it's a dream for me, I'm speechless. The top three all qualified for the Olympics. Bolt is now looking forward to defending his title at the Games, as Blake, or the man known as the Beast, is ready for a challenge. Joanne Wong, ATV News. Time to check your Mark 6 tickets. Here are tonight's winning numbers. 10, 13, 28, 32, 37, 41. The extra number is 1. Now the weather forecast for the next few days. Mainly cloudy with a few showers tomorrow, brightening up on Monday and mainly fine for the rest of the week. Here's a look at the weather around the world. That's all the news for now. Thanks for watching ATV. I'm Edna Zer. Good night. Coming up, racing to win.